86, 83, a complete muck fest. Mm -hmm. You know, PJ Tucker chirping in KD's grill. The overzealous security guard come flying in like uh, Cowboy Bob Orton. I oh, know. Did he get banned? <laughs> he did. Can't go anymore. Yep. Like he's protecting uh, Roddy Piper back in the day with the cast. I mean, it, it, it was interesting. And I got on the air, and there's the act, exact opposite take of my partner. I said, mm -hmm. not only did I love the game, Tiki hated it. it was not only did garbage. I love it, it was they shot 38%. Oh, I know. We know the numbers. Not only did I love that game, but I also said, it was my favorite playoff game to date. And mm -hmm. you know why? Because I knew, I knew it would reveal character. Yeah. It would tell me how willing the Bucks are, you know, to fight the rest of it the, for their coach, you know, for their championship uh, pursuit. And I also knew that we'd get a sense uh, whether or not the Nets, who are trying to outscore you, run you out of the gym, if the Nets had the backbone to be able and the willingness to stand in the ring and punch back reveal character yeah that's what that game brought and here we are yeah i'll give you that bt and i'll give it that the bucket the bucks almost said the buccaneers but the milwaukee bucks have some backbone and they can score and they can play tough and pj tucker if they do get through this series is going to be viewed as the the turning point like he was the guy who you know disrupted KD's, I don't know, psyche and then dominance. And even though that's not quite what happened, but still, um, PJ Tucker will get a lot of credit if they do pull through this BT. But here's the thing mm -hmm. I think it shifts clearly in their favor. The Brooklyn Nets. To whose favor? The Bucks. Okay, the, obviously. The Brooklyn given. Nets are, are becoming victims of what victimized them all season long uh. inconsistencies in health of their stars. And look, maybe if Joe Harris. Hits two more of those. I'm talking about in game three. Mm -hmm. Hits two more of those jumpers, or even just one of those three pointers. Uh, they take a, a, a 3 0 lead as opposed to making it 2 1 uh, and going into game four. And so, yeah, I can't put it all on the stars because the role players had a role to play and they didn't do it in game three as well. But when Kyrie goes down in game two, it, I mean, all bets are off now. I mean, KD is going to try to carry this team by himself, it seems like. There may be some acceleration, which we'll get to, to James Harden's return, which could be risky in and of itself. But KD has got to take on the role of I am the do-it-all, sometimes by myself, superstar of the Brooklyn Nets. And that's a challenge that I'm not sure, BT, he was looking forward to when he first came to the Brooklyn Nets. Well, that's you're being kind because that's a challenge that, quite frankly, he's always run from. <laughs> I mean, to be more direct. I mean, there's no need to beat around the bush here. He has actually, you know, tactically strategized to avoid the situation that you just described. Now... Kevin Durant is so good at basketball, mm -hmm. I will make no definitive statements on the limitations as to what he can provide the Nets next couple of games. That's yeah. how much I respect Agreed. Kevin Durant's ability, his prowess to ball, right? But you, have, you have to. Of course. He's one of the all-time greats. But if the last two games are an accurate foreshadow, a snapshot, then the Nets are dead. 9 for 25 in Game 4, 11 for 28 in Game in game 3. Both games woefully below 50%. You know, and listen, I... It's funny because you and and you. I don't utter this line because I, I I just really thought of this. But Tiki's stock line, and I've heard it from day one, the first time we ever did a show together, January two, twenty thirteen. Tiki got into this to watch greatness, right? That's why you really got into this to to follow the greatness, to watch the greatness, to watch it unfold. Uh, the reason I got into this <laughs> is because I want answers to questions that burn deep inside my sporting soul. And an answer that I want before I, when it's all said and done in five years, whatever it is, and Durant retires, and I put him wherever I eventually put him on my all-time list, and I'm a tough grader. You know, I don't, even, I don't have Shaq in my top ten. I'm a tough grader. You know that when it comes to my top ten. I want to see what he's been running from. Yeah. And I want to see if he's got the broad enough shoulders to elevate. And may I add one more thing? Go ahead. I don't care. Now, this is going to sound, you want to talk about being blunt, and, and this is not personal. I don't care if the Bucks lose the next two games by a combined two points. If Kyrie Irving, Kyrie's not playing. We might not see, even if they got to the finals, Kyrie might be done. Kyrie's yeah. out for a while. Yeah. But if James Harden does not play a second the rest of the way, and obviously, same with Kyrie. So they're two, two of the 66% of the star trio out. 
I don't care if the Bucks lose by two points combined. Bud fired. Yeah. If yeah. those two guys don't That's a good play, point. it's a good point. And you can't win the series, you got to go. Yeah, I agree with you. Here's why I think that uh, Kevin Durant might struggle. I'm not going to say he is. I'm not going to guarantee that he's going to struggle. I'm going to say he might struggle because uh-huh. when I look at this Buccaneers team, this this Buccaneers, this Bucks team, hey, Milwaukee, doing, Bucks, I don't know. I got Tampa Bay on my mind, man. Because I was just talking to my brother. We're going to play golf in a few weeks, and we were talking about how he's getting down there. Okay. And so I have the Bucks on my mind. But this, this 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 Milwaukee Bucks squad, BT, uh, they struggled a little bit with guys who are excellent ball handlers. Like that, that's why Kyrie and James Harden, even in for games one and two, uh, had they have so much success because they they can't pick them up. You know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. who's defending those guys? I know Giannis is Defensive Player of the Year, but who you putting to check Kyrie? You know what I mean? Like who who's handling James Harden? He's going to get to where he wants to do. He's going to make every uh, op- open pass and get to the rim and shoot three pointers. It's hard for them to check guys like Kyrie and James Harden. But now that Kevin Durant is the one superstar, I can imagine Steve Nash has got to be thinking, the ball's got to go in your head, your hands. It's got to be in your hands. KD's a good ball handler. Mm-hmm. He's not an elite ball handler. No, he's not. And so I, if they're going to tr- if they're going to push the rock where it has to be pushed, BT, it has to go to K- through KD. There's going to be lots and lots of uh, inefficiencies, turnovers. At least is what I think, which is going to benefit the Bucks in so many more ways. Yeah, KD might score 35, but he's going to have 10 turnovers if he's got to be the guy that's going to be handling the rock most of the time. And because, and, I, and the reason I say that mm-hmm. is because who who else is Who's point guarding? No, Mike, it's J- Mike James. Issue. You know who Mike James? Who, who's issue. doing it? There, it's there, an issue. there isn't a great ball handler left on this squad right now. No, there's not. I mean, Mike James. Yeah, in a couple of, in a couple of minutes spurts, you know, to to give Kyrie a blow. Yeah. You know, like you saw early in the series with Shake Milton, he you know dusted him off. He scored 18 points. I guess that would have been Game Two. Yeah, uh, we'll the, get to the 76ers. The 76ers. We'll get to that game a little bit later. You know, those ancillary pieces are nice until they have to become main components. <laughs> that's right. That's that's the problem. That's right. I mean, so I, I, I listen. I mean, it it is amazing how this script has completely flipped. Uh, I again, if it wasn't Kevin, like if it if it was just, this is going to sound odd, and and I don't, I'm not. I'm not trying to bury Kyrie with shade here because it yeah. sucks that he's hurt. It really you want to see you want to see the best play. That's right. But if Durant went down, and it was just Kyrie and Harden up in the air, I would already say Bucks will win. Mm-hmm. But because it's Kevin Durant who's still left, and and again I know they do things very di- completely different skill sets. Uh, I guess I just have a little more conviction in the belief meter with Durant yeah. than I do Kyrie. He's yeah. one of the all-time greats. But here's the thing. When was the last time, BT, yeah. and, I'm, and I'm honestly trying to think, think this through, when was the last time that Kevin Durant had to go score 45 or 50? Like had to out like of had necessity to. or had to 45 as no, a luxury? No. Had to out of necessity. Forget a, regular, forget, forget a regular season game that you know doesn't matter and he just got the hot hand. They're like, here you go, feed, feed that one. Alley-oop off the backboard. Uh-huh. You know, forget that kind of game. Uh-huh. I'm talking about a pressure situation where he had to go score 45 to 50 points in order for his team to win. If he doesn't do it, the team's not winning. Well, and maybe, I'm not saying that's going was... to be the case, yeah. but that could be the case. If Chris, if Middleton, Chris Middleton, and Giannis keep scoring at the rate that they're scoring, uh, Kevin Durant's going to have a lot of pressure on his back because nobody else is consistently putting the ball in the hole. No. I want to love my boy Joe Harris, but damn, he's been terrible the last two games, it's right? A bad series, Steve. Bad, bad. He had, he, had two, he, had a, he had a good first game. The last three have been, eh. mm-hmm. yeah, rough for him. So who else is scoring for 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 the Nets if? Kyrie's hurt, and and Kevin Durant is the Nobody. only one that can exactly. No, you you can. So he's got to go score fifty. Yeah. When was the last time he's had to do it? Well, it's funny. I'm thinking about this, and you know, when, when the key is in in important like must have games. Yeah. Probably never. You know, early his rookie year at the Seattle SuperSonics. <laughs> um, you know, his first year or so in OKC. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they they were on the brink of a championship for a minute there with with the other two guys with Harden and Russ. But yeah. you had Russ and you had Harden. You know, who obviously wasn't quite Harden like Harden is now. But I mean, he was uh, he was a bucket getter. I mean, he was you know he was, he was, he was even then he was incredible. So the answer is probably never. Uh, he's always. And this seems like a harsh characterization, but 
I'm just looking at the history of his resume. This is a situation that he has always run from. Mm. Now there's no running. Yeah. Then no hiding. Yeah. He's got to put it all. It's all on him. I mean, and, and that's. Isn't it fitting? The, I mean, I this thought, is really. This is what. But here's as, a, the, as a fan, you yeah. want these answers. Yes. 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 And so. I want this. In some ways, BT, this kind of sets up for what both of us want. Like, you want the answer. I want the right? answer. I want to see KD be great. Like, I, I want to see him prove that this this stratosphere that he's obviously in. You know, he's not going to fall out of it if he has a bad game uh, you know, five. Right? You know what I mean? He's not going to fall out yeah. of that stratosphere that he's in. But if he has a if he goes and scores 45, uh, 48 points or whatever it may be in his clutch, and not single-handedly, but let's do that because that's what we do in sports radio. He single-handedly pushes yes. the pushes One on the five. Nets. Exactly. Pushes the Nets uh, you know, t- towards a, a game up in this series and towards the, the Eastern Conference Finals, then I will have watched greatness, and I will have I will appreciate it to the point where um, I feel like man, KD is in a level now that I I never really reserved for him because I've seen LeBron do this right. I've seen LeBron do this in the postseason early, early, sure. early. Even some of those games against um, uh, against the Golden State Warriors. He oh, and, absolutely. He and Kyrie, when everybody was hurt. That's oh, right. Yeah. Putting his head down to do it. I'm going to the rim. I'm yep. scoring. I'm get, I'm getting mine. Right. Yep. We're I'm going to find a way to get this done. I want to see KD because KD's that kind of player. Like he's supposed to be that that but, guy. But, 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 but. Wait, 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 is he? I mean, you well, said he's that kind of player. Where's that evidence, though? He's I, there is he's no evidence. Two years old. I'm talking about perceptually. In gotcha. my mind. In my mind. Yeah, yeah. He's, in my mind too. He's this guy, and I want to see it. That's yeah. why when I just ask you that question, I honestly can't think of it. Like, when was the last time he was forced to score 45 or 50 because nobody else can score or has been consistent scoring, and he's done it? Yeah. I, don't, well, I, I gave don't, you the answer. It's I, pretty much never. I think you're right. And so Look, this is this is an opportunity for him from Kevin Durant, and yeah. it'll make him great, and it'll give you the answer. No matter what happens, whether he does it or he doesn't, you're yes. getting your answer. Now, I know that – I know what you want with greatness, but let me flip this. What if – P.J. Tucker Mm -hmm. continues to harass him, and he shoots not not every single possession, but the majority of the workload falls on P.J. Tucker's shoulders again. And he responds defensively, hits a couple three. Well, even if he doesn't hit threes, but from a defensive point, like greatness, we assume this this you know this maestro performance, uh, um, you know, all time rarefied air. What if P.J. Tucker's the one that gives you greatness? Is is that the, is like if if yeah, Durant well, shoots nine for thirty, yeah, and it's because of Tucker's hounding defense, that's greatness. True, maybe not what you're looking for, but would you but appreciate it? But of course, I'll but appreciate would, would, it. Would but it make, but it's not going to not satisfy you. Um, no, it wouldn't. no, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. You know why? 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 Because it's the expectation. So I came into this series, and I think most people did, and especially after games one and two, you came into this series saying, dude, the Nets are just, they're just so, they're so much better. Yep. Right? The expectation, I know exactly what it is. I I mean, I hope this thing goes five games. You know, maybe it's going to be a sweep. I hope, but I hope it goes five games. And then all of a sudden, the expectation shifts because of injuries to James Harden. Now, uh, I, they say it's nothing because his injuries, are, uh, uh, x-rays are negative, but that was a vicious-looking ankle Dude, he was twist. on crutches. And, and in a boot. Yeah, so he's not playing. There's no way there's there no was an ex- x-ray negative. You know, Maybe it just didn't show up on the x-ray at the, at the facility. He's not playing. You're right, BT. But the expectation now has shifted, but my pre-series you know, series expectation is still there. Right, the Nets need to be this team, and the only way they're going to get there is if Kevin Durant is this superstar. So that's what I want to see. Like I, 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 like I, I, I hitched my wagon to where I thought the Nets were going, and if they fall short, it's like I'm disappointed because of the pre pre series expectation. Now, now in real time, is it great for the Bucks? And yes, can they now change this narrative about themselves and keep their coach from getting fired? Of course, but that's the next series conversation that I'm having, not this series. Uh, this series, I was all in in my mind on the Nets, and even if things go wrong, because very rarely in sport, health, very rarely in life, the things go just as you script them, right? Mm-hmm. But the really good ones and the great ones still find a way to get you know what done and so the nets have that chance really kevin durant has that chance and if he does it i'll say man that's the greatness i was looking for and if he doesn't do it you'll say that's the answer i was looking for and deep down you don't actually expect them to do it do you 
I don't. So I want to be surprised. I. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to be surprised now. Uh huh. So I gotcha. we'll see. Maybe a little surprised. The Suns certainly are actually very surprised. They swept Denver. Yeah. Wow. We're going to get to that. Uh, let's do that next. CP3. And you want to talk about perhaps, perhaps uh, a little hyperbolic for some, but perhaps the most interesting economic decision in the history of the NBA. Chris Paul is going to be 37 next playoffs. He's going to opt out of forty of almost $45 million this summer, and he's going to get a multi-year deal from somebody. Think about that. So Chris Paul's legacy, that is obviously up. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified when we drop fresh content.